in the last lecture we discussed uh, we began with uh, the semantics of predicate logic uh, where we discussed about when do we say that a given well formed formula in the predicate logic is true when it is going to be false etc in continuation with the uh, uh, last uh, the discussion on uh, discussion of the last lecture we will be continuing and then we will be talking about some more examples so that we can uh, get this idea in a better way. So we will uh, we'll try to talk about the semantics of the predicate logic uh, in greater detail with some examples in this particular kind of lecture. So what is important for the semantics of the predicate logic is uh, there are two things one is the domain it does not make any sense to talk about uh, the truth value of a given predicate logic formula without respect to some kind of domain. So we need to fix a domain it can be natural number it can be real number it can be set of people say reverse etc and all um, we need to fix the domain and then you need to have an interpretation function i uh, and that constitutes d and i uh, constitutes what we call it as a model or a structure uh, etc. So now uh, in this particular kind of context we defined what we mean by we provided formal definition of a structure so essentially what uh, it talks about is is that in the predicate logic we have variables constants predicates and functional symbols each one when you assign some kind of uh, uh, some values to these things uh, it has to find some kind of uh, an entity in the domain where the predicates are mapped to 0 and 1 uh, that means the property uh, whether or not it holds or not is the one which we are going to see and then each individual constant should have a member in the domain d etc each functional symbol finds another kind of energy functional symbol in the domain etc. So now uh, how can we define truth uh, the truth of a sentence phi a given formula phi in an L with respect to some kind of structure which consists of domain and the interpretation function uh, structure A in which uh, an element A belongs to A is named by a ground term of L and it is defined by means of some induction like this. For atomic sentences R uh, T1 to Tn in a given structure A that is going to hold uh, that means R T1 to Tn is going to be true with respect to a structure A if and only if uh, if you have R to the power of A T1 raised to the power of A to, T to the, T, Tn raised to the power of A so that means uh, the relation R A on A N assigned to R holds of the elements named by the terms T1 to Tn otherwise it is going to be false. So we will give some examples to, uh, uh, to talk more about uh, the definition of truth with respect to uh, the formulas in the predicate logic. In the context of uh, propositional logic we have seen what we mean by saying that uh, a particular formula is true or false with respect to a structure A, a model A. Uh, for example not phi is going to be true in a structure or model A uh, obviously when it is not the case that uh, phi follows uh, from A actually it should be written in this particular kind of sense. So A does not belong to phi if that is the case then not phi is considered to be true in this particular kind of model A. In the same way phi r psi is going to be true in a model A if either phi is true in a model A and psi is true in a model A uh, that is a standard definition uh, and the conjunction is going to be true when both uh, conjuncts are true that is taken care by the third one and implication uh, uh, that is going to be true only when if, uh, if your premise is true and the conclusion false. Uh, in the same way phi if and only if psi these are the things which are exactly same as the case of uh, propositional logic. So the additional things that we have in the case of uh, uh, predicate logic are uh, uh, some of the truth values with respect to quantifies what is extra in predicate logic uh, are two more operators they are considered to be quantifies first is uh, there exists some v phi v that is true with respect to a structure A. Uh, if uh, that is going to be true at least for one ground term T that means if you substitute one ground term T then this 
there exists some v phi of v holds then then that particular uh, kind of formula is true with respect to a structure a that means for some ground term t phi of t that means uh, x is sub, v is substituted by t and then phi t has to be true in a structure a if that is the case for at least one of the ground term t then obviously that is called as there exists some v phi of v is true with respect to structure a and for all v phi v is going to be true in a structure a if it happens for uh, if phi of t is going to be true for all the values of t whatever value that you are going to take into consideration for t is in all these cases phi of t has to be true in that sense we call it as for all v for phi v is going to be true with respect to a model uh, a. We can talk about uh, some other important logical properties such as satisfiability validity in this context. So uh, a sentence phi uh, in a predicate logic, uh, so first of all what is considered to be a sentence in predicate logic if it does not have any uh, free variables then obviously it is called as a sentence otherwise it is going to be a formula in the predicate logic. So that sentence phi of L the language of predicate logic is considered to be valid which is usually represented as uh, models and phi especially if it is true in all structures for L if that is going to be true in all kinds of structures whatever interpretation that you are in all interpretations that is going to be true then it is considered to be tautology. So uh, that is what we mean by validity truth in all structures is considered to be what we mean by validity and given a set of sentences sigma which consists of p1 to pn we say that p1 is considered to be logical consequence of uh, sigma if and only if uh, p1 is true in every structure in which uh, in that particular kind of structure all the members of uh, sigma are also going to be true in all the members of sigma are true p1 also has to be true if that is the case then we say that p1 is a logical consequence of sigma and a third important thing is is that a set of sentences um, let us say p1 to pn is going to be satisfiable if there is at least one structure a in which all the members of sigma are true where p1 is also true uh, and such a structure is also called as modal of a given uh, set of formula sigma if sigma has no model then obviously that means there is no interpretation in which uh, x is true that means you are not able to find out at least one interpretation in which uh, your uh, x is true then it is called as unsatisfiable. Uh, let us consider some examples uh, uh, let us take uh, this into consideration f b conjunction of the following three formulas they are f1 f2 f3 the first one is represented as uh, uh, read as for all x there exists some y r x y now r x y means here that x is less than y uh, suppose if you take 1 obviously it is less than 2 if you take the natural numbers into consideration if you take if you pick up x as 1 and y as 2 then obviously 1 is less than 2 that is what we mean by r x y and then you have f which is a conjunction of all these things f1 f2 f3 uh, now we are going to show that it is going to be satisfiable in the domain of natural numbers it might be false with respect to real numbers uh, some other numbers etc but we are going to say that it is going to be satisfiable when you say that this conjunction of formulas are going to be satisfiable if at least in one interpretation in which this particular kind of property f1 and f2 f3 is going to be true then it is called as satisfiable otherwise it is going to be unsatisfiable. So now f1 is the formula which is represented in this sense for all x there exists some kind of y or x y in the context of natural numbers for all x whatever number that you take into consideration in the domain of natural numbers there always exists some kind of y uh, where that particular kind of uh, x is always uh, x is less than y. So for example if you take into consideration uh, one to be the particular kind of thing there always exists uh, uh, there exists some kind of y2 which is less than uh, uh, sorry if you take uh, x to be greater than 1 uh, then all the elements uh, all the numbers greater than 1 2 3 4 5 6 etc and all 
for all those numbers uh, obviously one is less than those particular kind of numbers you know. the second one is there does not exist x such that our uh, x uh, relation is x is less than x and for all x for all y for all z the third one is stating that if x is less than y and y is less than z then obviously x has to be less than z if it happens to all x y z and that holds otherwise it is going to be false for example if you take the three numbers 1 2 3 etc and all 1 is less than uh, 2 2 is less than 3 obviously 1 has to be less than 3 in the same way 2 3 4 if you take into consideration in order 2 is less than 3 3 is less than 4 that means 2 obviously has to be less than 4 so now analysis is like this so now uh, in at least one particular kind of case where it it, it uh, this property holds in particular then f1 is going to be true f2 is going to be true f3 is satisfiable so then each f1 f2 f3 are satisfiable then uh, then f is obviously considered to be satisfied so the first one uh, for any natural uh, number x there is always a number y uh, number y there is a number y such that x is less than y you always find some kind of uh, arrangement like this for any number that you take into consideration x uh, there always exists some kind of y where x is less than y uh, natural numbers it consists of 1 to infinity and all for example if you take any number such as let us say 25 you take into consideration then always there exists some kind of number which is greater than that one which is less than another number so let us say 26, 29 or 30, 35 etc and all. So at least one such kind of situation it happens so that is why for all x whatever number that you are taking into consideration in the natural numbers there always exists some kind of y where x is always less than y. So that holds that satisfies. Now the second thing is there does not exist x or xx. So it is written as for all x it is not the case that rx is. Uh, that is no number of x is less than itself which is obviously the case uh, in terms of natural numbers. Suppose if you add 0 to it uh, then uh, things will change or minus if you add integers to it this may not hold. But in the case of natural numbers uh, if you take 2, 3, 4 anything into consideration the 2 cannot be less than its own number that is 2. It has to be equal to 2 uh, uh, it is definitely not less than 2. So that also holds and the third one for any numbers you take any natural numbers into consideration in some kind of order if x is less than y this holds and y is less than z and then obviously x is obviously considered to be less than z if you take 2, 3, 4 etc and all 2 is less than 3, 3 is less than 4 obviously 2 is less than 4. So now let us consider uh, some uh, interesting formula uh, that is uh, stated as uh, stated in this way for all x px implies there exists x px this formula is going to be valid in all non empty domains uh, when when do you say that domain is non empty at least it's, it has at least uh, few, uh, at least uh, the domain is domain has some kind of objects otherwise the, the domain is considered to be empty for example if you talk about set of people at least some kind of people have to be there in that domain otherwise if there are no people etc and all only animals non living beings etc and all the domain is considered to be empty. So if every element x has a property p then of course there is at least one x uh, in it having that particular kind of property for example if you say that uh, all human beings die in some day or other. Uh, if uh, at least one human being has that particular kind of property I mean everyone has to die in some day or other. So then it means uh, by saying that some x y z if you take it arbitrarily from the domain of people uh, that also they also have uh, they also satisfy this particular kind of property p. So the obviously the formula seems to be certainly varied in case of non empty domain that means the domain consists of set of people in that uh, if it happens for all the things for example if you take into consideration set of birds for example uh, birds crows in particular uh, if uh, all crows are black most of the crows are black and all um, then if it holds for all the crows and all 
then you take any two or three birds into consideration which are considered to be crows which are also considered to be black obviously. So for all x p x if it holds then there exists some x p x also holds. So this happens only with respect to a non empty domain but what happens if you take into consideration an empty domain like uh, <coughs> like for example unicorns uh, demons etc and all, all empty domains it does not exist. So uh, in this case what happens is, is that for all x p x is going to be true for any choice of p because empty set is a, a set of uh, all the sets so in that sense for all x p x is going to be true of any choice of p but the consequent in this conditional that is there exists some x p x that is going to be false because that leads to the existence of uh, uh, x you know. So for all x p x uh, does not we do not have any commitment that that particular x has to exist in the universe. Uh, with respect to empty domain for all x p x is going to be true and with respect to empty domain there exists some x p x is going to be false. So for any interpretation I means any structure that you are taking to consider which has domain and interpretation function etc. Uh, where the antecedent is true here that means the for all x p x is going to be true uh, whereas the consequent is going to be false here there exists some x p x is false hence uh, the given well formed formula is going to be false and hence this formula is going to be invalid with respect to uh, empty domain. So in general when we when we try to evaluate uh, the well formed formulas that means evaluating the truth conditions of uh, given well formed formula in a predicate logic we usually take into consideration that the domain is non empty. You can also take into consideration the uh, empty domain then in that case only universal quantifies the formulas which begin with the universal quantifies are going to be true and others uh, the, the property p x with the universal quantifier is going to be true and existential quantifier uh, there exists some x p x is going to be false. So these are some of the uh, things which we need to talk about in the context of semantics of predicate logic. So now uh, a formula phi of a language uh, L uh, which consists of free variables v1 to vn is considered to be valid in a structure A for L which is represented as uh, phi models A, uh, phi is a semantic consequence of A structure A if the universal closure of phi so that is the sentences for all v1 to vn to phi which you got it by putting uh, for all vi in front of phi for every free variable vi in that exist in phi and that if it happens to be true in a if it all for all vi that uh, the formula is going to be true in that structure a then obviously uh, phi is true in that particular kind of form structure a. So a formula phi of L is considered to be valid if it is valid in every structure for L otherwise it is considered to be an invalid formula. So now let us consider some more examples consider a language which is specified by, by some kind of binary uh, relation symbol R uh, which relates to objects in some way it can be plus it can be greater than minus etc and all they are all binary operations and we have some constants c0 c1 to cn and we can talk about two possible structures uh, in the context of the formal definition of validity a structure that we have given earlier. Now let us talk about a domain which consists of uh, a r d sometimes you write it as a d etc it consists of natural numbers and let r a be usually the relation r with respect to a structure a that is the usual relation we take into consideration less than and then there are some constants which find some kind of uh, uh, members in the domain uh, you write it as c0 raised to the power of a that is uh, when it is the case it is 0 and if you take 1 into consideration c1 it takes the value 1 and now in that context the sentence for all x there exists some y r x y says that in the context of natural numbers we are taken the domain domain as d and now we assign some kind of uh, uh, values to the constants and we have a relation uh, 
which is a function uh, between this thing. Uh, and now the sentence for all x there exists some y or x y states that states like this for every natural number there is a larger one uh, that r x y stands for this thing for all x there exists some y means for every natural number that is for all x uh, there exists some y means there is a larger one y. So obviously that formula for all x there exists some y x y where x is less than that particular kind of y for example if you take uh, uh, a number as 25, 25 etc and all uh, 41 there always there will be number 42 which is uh, uh, this 41 is always less than uh, 42 you always uh, come across with a number which is greater than uh, 41. So if REA is considered to be usual relation greater than then uh, this particular kind of sentence is going to be false. Uh, for example, if you take uh, 1 and 2 into consideration, uh, 2 and 1 into consideration, uh, then for all x there exists some y that is there exists at least one y that is 1 uh, which is less than greater than that one, 1 is not greater than 2 so that is why this sentence is going to be false. So depending upon how you uh, define your uh, uh, function that r x y and the domain. Uh, that matters uh, to us so your interpretation also changes. So now let us consider domain A to be rational numbers Q to be Q0 to Qn and RA to be again it is taken as a relation less than and constants are represented in this sense Z, C to the power of C0 A is 0 and C1 A is 1 you are taking into consideration two constants uh, 0 and 1 now the sentence for all x for all y r x y uh, implies r uh, there exists some x r x z and r z y that is going to be true in this structure it says that usually rationals are uh, dense however uh, the same thing is going to be false with respect to uh, this is going to be true with respect to q but the same thing is going to be false with respect to uh, natural numbers. So what essentially I am trying to say is is that uh, same formula is going to be true with respect to some kind of domain of natural numbers same thing when, when you take real numbers into consideration the same formula uh, here in this case for all x for all y r x y implies uh, so and so the formula is going to be false. Uh, so now let us consider some more examples uh, two formulas for all x px and there exists some x not px now let an interpretation be as follows you have a domain D which consists of two numbers usually natural numbers 1 and 2 and you have an assignment for P so whenever you have P P to the power of 1 is going to be T when it is 2 that formula is going to be false and now we need to show whether the following formulas are true under this particular kind of interpretation. So now the first formula for all x px uh, this kind of property px is going to be false when it takes a value 2 so it is not true for all the values of x. So that is why for all x px is going to be false because px is not true with this not true for both uh, it is true for x is equal to 1 but definitely it is not true for x is equal to 2 because we said that p of 2 is false it is not true for all the things it is true for only one particular kind of thing only there exists some x px holds rather than for all x px. So now if you take the second thing into consideration there exists some x not px which is going to be true in this interpretation because uh, not of p2 obviously is going to be true in this particular kind of interpretation. So if it is satisfied by at least one particular kind of uh, interpretation then uh, there exists some x not px is going to be satisfiable otherwise uh, it is going to be unsatisfiable if it, is, if it is true in all the interpretations it is unsatisfiable if it is false in all the interpretations it is considered to be unsatisfiable. So here there exists some x not px is true in this particular kind of then at least one interpretation in which the formula is going to be true and that will uh, serve our purpose. So now uh, let us consider uh, uh, important theorem which is which, which is stated in this sense uh, is stated as follows let phi be an open uh, formula of a predicate logic that means quantified free uh, that means it has at least free variables in that uh, kind of thing it is a formula and we may view phi as a formula uh, phi prime 
of propositional logic by regarding every atomic sub formula of phi as the propositional letter. So what this uh, theorem essentially says is, is that you have some kind of tautologies in uh, propositional logic and if you substitute it with some kind of instances uh, when you have a substitution instance uh, which are formulas in the predicate logic that are also going to be tautologies. For example in this case uh, uh, P implies P is considered to be a tautology or Px implies Px. So now uh, uh, you substituted it like this thing for all x Px uh, implies for all x Px for example if you say that thing that is obviously going to be a tautology. So in this case for all x Px implies there exists some x Px uh, that is going to be uh, go, going to be true in, in a non empty domain but definitely is going to be false that is what we have seen earlier uh, that is this formula is going to be false. So now if you have if you have a formula Pc if something holds for some particular kind of uh, entity then you can say that there is at least one kind of uh, entity which has this particular kind of property. If at least one chalk piece is white in color then you can say that there exists some chalk piece such that this chalk piece is white in color. So that always holds so it is why it is considered to be a tautology. Uh, so in the same way for all x uh, we have we know that p implies p if and only if not not p is true then you replace it with px uh, in this particular kind of formula an instance of uh, propositional logic is a substitution instance of tautology in the propositional logic and that is also considered to be a tautology. So uh, now let us consider some more examples so that we uh, will understand this uh, uh, particular kind of uh, thing the semantics of uh, the predicate logic in a better way. So let us consider one simple example and we will stop here. So the, the, the problem states like this what do the following formulas mean, mean uh, meaning of a formula means giving the truth conditions that is what we mean by that are they true are they true or false. So now we are taking into consideration few examples simple examples. Uh, so for a predicate logical formula to be true uh, or false we need to have a domain first of all and then you need to have an interpretation i. So now this is the formula which we have x square uh, greater than 0. So now where the universe of discourse or a domain is like this. Uh, is set of real numbers uh, this universe of discourse is considered to be set of real numbers which are represented as this thing r. So what are uh, real numbers we have all these things natural numbers 1 to infinity and then we have whole numbers that is 0 1 to all the natural numbers together with uh, 0 whole numbers and then we have integers, uh, integers like uh, minus 1, minus 2, uh, minus 3, etc. This is minus infinity and then plus infinity, 1, 2, 3, etc. And then you have rational numbers 1 by 2, 2 by 3, etc. and all. So, all these things are considered to be real numbers. So, now uh, if you take this particular kind of formula into consideration with respect to real numbers. Now we want to see whether this particular kind of formula is going to be true or not. So now if you take uh, uni universe of discourse to be only natural numbers. So now uh, for example if you take uh, uh, natural numbers into consideration if you take x into con x as 1 then it says that 1 square is less than uh, 0 obviously it is less than 0. Uh, so for natural numbers uh, it seems to be the case that uh, whatever value that you substitute for x this is going to hold 2 square which is 4 which is obviously greater than or equivalent to uh, 0 which is greater than 0. So now uh, this particular kind of formula uh, for all x there x square is greater than or equivalent to 0 
for every real number x we have this particular kind of thing x square is greater than 0 is the case so that is why this is going to be t that means in all these situations uh, even if you take into consideration minus 2 or minus 1 etc and all minus 1 whole square is equal to 1 obviously 1 is greater than 0. So this formula holds for the real numbers so uh, hence that is that formula is going to be true. So now let us consider another example for all x uh, x square is greater than 0 you remove this uh, uh, this thing x square greater than 0 but here real numbers also consist of uh, this uh, whole numbers also for example if you substitute 0 square then uh, definitely 0 is not greater than 0 and all but 0 is greater than or equivalent to 0. So now if you take x square greater than 0 now if you take this into consideration and that is going to be false in at least one instance this formula is going to be false then this does not hold for all x x square is greater than 0 does not hold so that is why this formula is going to be false whereas this particular kind of formula is going to hold because if you take 0 into consideration this formula is telling us that at least one x uh, so for all x for example if you take 0 into consideration 0 square is 0 only that is greater than or equivalent to 0 the second condition holds and all that is 0 is equivalent to 0 but in this case it is strictly stating that 0 is greater than 0 which is considered to be false so this formula does not hold uh, in particular uh, for the uh, real numbers. Uh, so now uh, if you take uh, another kind of formula uh, so now let us consider the domain to be uh, uh, real numbers only that is the domain real numbers uh, which is written in this sense so now uh, uh, if you take uh, another example such as there exists some x, x square plus 1 uh, is equivalent to 0. So now uh, in this case uh, so is there any real number which satisfies this particular kind of property and all. for example uh, if you take 1, 2, 3 etc and all natural numbers then uh, suppose if you take 1 square plus 1 which is equal to 2 which is not equivalent to 0 it does not satisfy this particular kind of thing or you take 2 or anything into consideration any natural number that you are going to take into consideration is always uh, it is not equivalent to 0. So now coming back to the whole numbers if you take 0 into consideration 0 square plus 1 which is obviously equivalent to 1 so there also it is not going to satisfy the whole numbers also I mean it is not true in any domain. So now let us consider integers it consists of even negative numbers also suppose if you take minus 1 minus 2 whole square for example it is considered to be 4 4 plus 1 5 which is not equivalent to 0 even that also it will not hold and then uh, this is the integers and even if you take into consideration uh, rational numbers and this is not going to be equivalent to 0 and that means that this formula x square plus 1 is equal to 0 it does not hold in any structure and all so the, the formula which does not hold in any structure is considered to be contradiction so x, x square plus 1 is equal to 0 for example if we just talk about only x square plus 1 is equal to uh, x square plus 1 is equal to 0 and usually we write it as x square is equal to minus 1 and x is equal to something like uh, plus or minus i x this is a complex number and all which uh, which is different from the real numbers. So uh, there is no model or no structure which satisfies this particular kind of formula that means this formula has to be contradiction. And now if you take into consideration some other examples such as uh, there exists some x uh, x square plus x minus 2 uh, is equal to 0 uh, whether this is going to hold in some, in some cases or not is the one which you are trying to see suppose if you take 
take uh, natural numbers into consideration. Uh, if you substitute 1 for it, what will happen? 1 plus 1, 2 and 2 minus 2 is equal to 0. That means it holds in at least uh, in the case of natural numbers. In at least one instance this formula is going to be true, then uh, this is going to be the whole formula is going to be T. So that means this formula is going to be true. That is it's true, it holds for all at least natural numbers then that particular kind of formula is obviously true. So uh, in this uh, uh, lecture what we have seen is, is that uh, we started with uh, uh, the semantics of uh, predicate uh, logic the definitions uh, and then we have seen with some examples when a given formula is true and when a given formula is considered to be false. The same formula is considered to be true of some kind of domain which is considered to be false in some other kind of domains. So in the next lecture what we will be talking about is some important decision procedure method uh, which is called as uh, which we have been using it in the case of in the context of propositional logic that is the semantic tablux method and using semantic tablux method we will be dealing with uh, uh, some of the important logical properties such as when group of statements are satisfiable uh, with us in the predicate logic when a given formula is considered to be a tautology, uh, when a given formula is a contradiction, etc. All these things which we will be talking about in the next class.